first fight on U.S. soil came in June of 2001, when he was tapped as a late replacement against feared South African Lejanolo Ledwaba. Lejanolo Ledwaba looked immaculate. He was one of those totally skilled fighters, and so he was a significant favorite here over Manny. Everybody worried because I'm trained two weeks only before the fight, but I believe that is my door way to be a world champion. Ledwaba right now. Like the emergence of Greta Garbo, that was one of those stunning, captivating nights. It was the first chance for people to see him, and uh, he was explosive. I think this guy just hit so hard that Ledwaba is totally on the defensive. Everything that I thought that he could do, he did. Almost a resignation in the eyes of Ledwaba. That's a TKO victory for the very impressive Manny Pacquiao. I go back far enough that I saw the great Flash Alordi, the last great Filipino fighter, and I thought, whoa, here comes another Alordi, except that he was even more dynamic because he was a great puncher. After his disputed victory over Barrera, Morales won a string of punishing battles, adding to his growing reputation as a warrior. He had this, this, this sort of um, humbleness, but then pretty soon he became so well known, and then they would have these uh, tabloid wars between him and uh, Marco Antonio Barrera, and that changed him completely. They have their own little war outside the ring because Barrera comes from Mexico City and Morales comes from Tijuana. Eric sees Marco as privileged, stuck up, too big for his britches. Hey, 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 hey. They hate each other. No, yo no lo odio. No más, no más. Recibo a la gente con el mismo cariño. Simplemente que chingue a su madre. Así de simple. Morales is a fighter who had a very high regard for himself, justifiably. Going into the rematch, he dismissed Barrera. He didn't even understand what all the fuss was about. Big right hand by Barrera, stuns Morales. He hits him in the mouth again. Hard right hand by Morales. Barrera continues to attack. This is what it's all about, pride, honor, revenge, Mexican boxing at its best. This time, the decision went to Barrera in a fight many felt Morales had won by a slim margin. And though fans eagerly awaited a third fight, another featherweight sensation loomed on the horizon for Barrera, Manny Pacquiao. I recall Barrera saying at the time before the fight, he reminds me of me when I was 24. He could see that this kid had a certain fire that was gonna be hard to put out. I bet on three fights in my life, and I bet Manny Pacquiao to win by knockout against Barrera. I said to Manny, all you gotta do is make this guy fight every minute of every round, and he will break down and he will fold. He will not last. This was, you know, a typhoon that had come across the Pacific. This was a force of nature. There's not a lot of time to adjust once those blows start coming, and Barrera wasn't prepared. He's getting hurt. Here comes Barrera's corner. Barrera's corner man is up on the apron. He's, he's going to step into the ring. That's a good decision. Finally. By the end of that night, I thought to myself, well, Marco's done, and I certainly don't want to ever see him in the ring again with somebody as dynamic and dangerous as Manny Pacquiao. A superstar emerges in San Antonio. Everything in the Philippines stopped. Everybody was just glued to his TV set. Manny Pacquiao was a heavy underdog, and a lot of people didn't expect him to win. But you know, he brings that hope to the Filipinos. He's been declared a national treasure by the government of the Philippines, which allows them to protect him with military forces. Here's a kid who sold stolen cigarettes on the streets so he could eat and becomes his country's most famous citizen, most celebrated citizen.
In 2004, the trilogy that became Mexico's treasure was complete. The Barrera Morales saga ended with a second loss for the Tijuana native. The defeat was a blow to Morales' pride. You fight a guy three times. You hear about him every day of your life and you don't want to. Porque tengo que hablar de él. Porque tengo que hablar de pendejos. Porque no puedo hablar de mí mismo. There is probably a pain in his heart about those three Barrera fights. And that it turned out that either he misjudged Barrera or himself or both. Morales looked to erase that pain the following year, and Manny Pacquiao was just the man to provide the motivation. Huge, tremendous motivation. A big part of being ready to fight Manny was that Manny had violently whacked Barrera, and if Eric could beat him, then he could go back to Mexico and say, see, I handled the guy who, uh, who blew up your boy. Morales had seen him fight. He saw him fight Barrera, and he had them all figured out. If Eric Morales was convinced of his ability to beat the Filipino, Pacquiao was equally bold. We're warming up in the dressing room, and Manny was telling jokes, and he's never like that. I mean, I slapped Manny with the mitt and said, come on, let's go, let's get to work. Stop screwing around. Incredible energy in the house. That crowd, about 50-50, Pacquiao Morales and all of them together and sharing that communion. Ooh, I mean, that was, that was an event. Remember guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Pacquiao was on the biggest stage that he had ever been in his life. I thought he was maybe a little too aggressive, too early. Both fighters focusing on the body early, but now Pacquiao lands his left hand point. And again, and the blinding speed of Pacquiao's apparent, and Morales chases him across the ring and says, let's fight. Eric Morales was able to use his advantages as the bigger man with a longer jab to outbox Pacquiao. Somebody is bleeding. It's not Morales. It's, it's Pacquiao who's bleeding from his right eye. All right, time. Good luck. Come easy, down. easy, Come easy. Let him, let him breathe. The blood comes to my eyes, and you can't concentrate to the fight. Manny, now you see breath, son. It took us three or four rounds to get over that panic of the cut and to get back into the fight. Great left hand by Morales stops Pacquiao on his track. Right hand wobbles him again. Morales senses a chance. Pacquiao comes back. Eric Morales, he's willing to stand there toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I mean, he found someone, as it turned out, who would stand there toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. What a right hand by Morales. Pacquiao's in trouble. Morales wobbled him with that right. You've got two guys who can take a lot of punishment, but Manny Pacquiao was limited by the eye, but also by the fact that he wasn't throwing enough right hands. Eric Morales is in command of a big fight. He ya no tenía el suficiente poder para hacerme algo. Nunca, realmente nunca lo he tenido para golpearme fuerte y sentir su poder. What a fight! As Eric Morales outboxes Manny Pacquiao in a violent fight. That was brilliant, Eric Morales. He had a plan. He executed the plan. He basically stayed within the envelope 90% of the time for 12 rounds. Among the issues going into that fight was Pacquiao's growing disillusionment with his promoter, Murad Muhammad. Freddie Roach claimed Muhammad had become a major distraction to the fighter and led the charge for his dismissal. It's kind of an unwritten rule in the sport that the trainer sticks to his, his knitting and, and does not interfere in a manager's business, but Freddie felt protective of Manny and he helped to create a confrontation between Manny and Murad Muhammad that led to the dissolution of that relationship. And I don't want to say that's why Eric won the fight. Eric won the fight. There's no doubt about that. But we did have a lot of distractions. Everybody advised me that you have to concentrate on your fight because when you lose, you're, you're wrong, you're, you're nothing. He's a go-along, get-along kind of guy. He was surfing the wave of his dramatic success and uh, enormous popularity. There's always something going on in Manny Pacquiao's life. He lives in a fishbowl in the Philippines. He's a movie star, a boxing star, a rising political star. You know, he's bigger than the president. An endorsement from him can turn an election. He's the most famous person in the Philippines, and he has no competition. 
It's unbelievable. I mean, his album, in the first week, it sold 500,000 copies. I don't even know if he can sing. Love and go.